Hey, what is going on everybody? It is the Mayor Joe here today working on CyberSec Labs Office. Uh, Office is a really neat machine. It's got a couple different ways to get to the root. Uh, however, we're going to go through the intended way today, which is going to require us to do some uh, manual enumeration, use a tool called WFuzz, uh, and more. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to it uh, and get right into this machine. So Office is at 17231 3.1. It's part of the CyberSec Labs new Challenge Labs. So we're going to run our Threader 3000 here really quick and make sure that we have uh, all the ports that we need to find. So we're going to go 17231.3.1. And let that run and we're going to see that labs or that our ports are going to start opening up here uh, so once these start opening up we can start poking around a little bit we can open up firefox and we can look to see what we've uh, what we've got so far uh, so let's go ahead and do that and you're going to notice that i've done this already this lab uh, however uh, you know so some of the things are going to be different for you that you're seeing the first time than uh, that i'm seeing however uh, for the most part, we'll walk through it. So here you're seeing a page. When you open this up, it's not going to look like this. It's not going to be as clean. What you need to do uh, is go to your etc hosts file. So we're going to do nano etc hosts. And we're going to add in uh, some information here. Now, uh, I don't want to give too much away with this, so don't pay attention to this right now. However, you're going to see 172313.1 office.csl. Uh, we're going to find that by coming to the website and control uing uh, to view the source and you can see here that uh, that the you know website resolves to office.csl so we need to add that to our host file so that the ip address locally uh, resolves to office.csl uh, we're going to do that we're going to control o and we're going to enter and we're going to exit uh, down below we see that we've quickly scanned all 65,000 ports in about 26 seconds and we see that we've got 20, 80, and 443 open. So let's end map those real quick. We can end map A, uh, port 22, 80, and 443 at 172.31.3.1, and run that. We're going to close this. We don't need it anymore. And let's come back to our website real quick and look around. We see that it's running WordPress. So we can run WordPress scanner, WP scan. Uh, additionally, we see, hey guys, it's your manager, Dwight. We see Dwight is a user here. Uh, we scroll down, we scroll down, we don't see a whole lot of other information. Um, of note, we see that uh, we do have a forum page on a subdomain, so we're going to have to look for a subdomain here. Uh, and we have our MMAP scan results back, so let's take a look. We have OpenSSH, probably not going to be able to do anything with that. We're running Apache 2.4, uh, probably not going to be able to do much with that. Uh, this WordPress version is pretty updated, so we're really not going to be able to do anything with that either. So, you know, this machine for all intents and purposes is very, uh, very secure. So we're gonna have to find a different way in, right? So we do have our address here. Uh, we know where we're at currently with that. Uh, we can go ahead and run what's called uh, WFuzz, for instance, and see if we can find this subdomain uh, that, that we see uh, suggested here. So let's open up a new terminal window. And some of you will be saying under your breath that I need to use Tmux or something else. Uh, I got that boomer life going, so uh, for me, I need to go ahead and you know do what I can remember. Um, WFuzz is pretty straightforward. It is kind of complicated at first, so I'm pulling up some notes really quick. Uh, but essentially, what we're going to do is uh, run this with a parameter called fuzz, which is going to allow us to uh, fuzz a, a specific portion of the address we're going to put in. So if you hear me scrolling through, it's because I'm looking for my notes. Uh, and we're going to run this. So it's going to be wfuzz-c-f. We're going to name our, uh, and actually we're going to cd real quick to desktop, csl, and office. We're going to run wfuzz-c, and then we're going to save our subdomains to a file called subdomains, or subdoms.txt. Uh, we're going to use a word list called, uh, from uh, sec list called fierce host list. So we're going to do, for me, it's going to be on my desktop. So root desktop sec list is going to be under discovery, DNS, 
and then it's going to be fierce host list and our url is going to be uhttp colon slash slash office dot csl and we're going to fuzz uh, the host fuzz dot office dot csl and run this and see what we get really quick and we're going to get an error message i clearly didn't put something in correctly uh, we might need a space here nope so need to figure out what i'm doing here really quick with uh, with my command uh, this happens often with me i apologize if you watch me live you'll see that this happens all the time uh, i think maybe we can just look through here i'm not sure why it's not working so just bear with me um, while i try to figure this out You would think a guy like me would be a little bit more organized with his notes so okay so we're missing the h flag for host let's try this one more time okay great so this is going to kick out a bunch of results unfortunately we're seeing that they're all like 200 uh so what we can do is we can stop this we see what these error messages are or what these uh this 32 240 uh you know return messages this is the size of the return message or, or what we're getting from it so we can weed this out using the dash dash hh flag and 32240. And we should start getting information back. Now it looks more like a fuzzer, right? We're fuzzing directories or, or subdomains to see if we can find anything. And as it continues on, uh, eventually if we're lucky, we will catch a subdomain. Uh, in this case, we will. If you were paying attention when we touched the nano file, you saw that we found forum. Uh, so now that we have a subdomain uh, in forum, uh, we can come over here and we can do forum.office.csl. And we see that we've got a bunch of chat logs, right? Uh, additionally, we can click chat logs. And we see that up here we get uh, chatlog.tht, which is interesting. This is something that uh, would suggest that there's a local file inclusion or an LFI in place. And we can use a tool such as DirSearch to try to uh, bust that LFI and see if we can find anything uh, that will give us results. So we're going to CD to our opt folder now, and we're going to use DirSearch, and that's Python 3 DirSearch. Our URL is going to be everything up to this point. So we're going to go all of this, we're going to copy this, and we're going to paste it. And I believe we can use for our extension, we can just use the wildcard for all. Uh, we want to use a word list this time. And our word list is going to be root desktop. Uh, and I believe it's dis uh, sec list, might be discovery. And I'm looking for something specifically. I don't think, actually, it's not going to be discovery. Let's open up sec list and find what we're looking for really quick. So we're looking for a list from Jason Haddix uh, that's going to. Uh, give us some LFI. Okay, so it's going to be fuzzing LFI and then LFI Jason Haddix. And this is going to allow us to uh, fuzz this LFI and see if we can find uh, what we're looking for. So LFI J Haddix TXT. Uh, and let's see what we can find here. So this should run and it's going to run quickly. And we see really, really quick uh, that, you know, we're getting 400s. We're not getting a whole lot. Um, but what we did get is this, and we're just going to open this up real quick and see if we can find anything with ht password, since that kind of sticks out at us. So let's just find .ht, and we see that we find, uh, you know, a, a, a LFI possibility with that. So. Uh, let's scroll down some more and we'll see what our options are and we see here that we've got a dot dot uh, hti as well so we can try these and see if we find anything so let's come back to our browser window and over here let's first try what dir search found which was dash ht password and see if we get any results from that and we don't uh, but we can try this and you see that we do uh we we get this dwight uh you know, username and hash back. So let's copy that and let's throw that over into our to crack folder or our to crack document. 
and see what we can get back. So I believe, and I'm not the best at cracking hashes, so please bear with me because it does kind of kick my butt a bit. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get anything from this running John. If not, we'll have to modify it. But I think we might get lucky here. So let's CD desktop John to crack. And let's use a word list equals passes rockyou.txt. No password hashes loaded, of course not. Um, it's about my luck that that's what would happen. Uh, again, I'm not very good at cracking hashes, so bear with me. Uh, MD cricked, uh, loaded one password hash. I don't know if John is going to give us anything here. Uh, and it does actually. So I'd already done this. It's in my pop file. Uh, but we see that we get a password of Cowboys1, right? So we should be able to try to use this now to try to log in to a website. So let's come over here in office.csl and see if we can log in. Now, we didn't directory bust uh, this, but typically your WordPress login is going to be wordpress.login.php. Uh, alternatively, this is a really easy password and we could probably brute force this login if we wanted. In this case, we're gonna play fair, we're not gonna do it. Uh, we know that we have a username of Dwight and now we got this Cowboys1. So let's see if we can get logged in here. And fortunately for us, we're going to. It's gonna take a second, it's kinda slow. Uh, however, we will get in here. So we're gonna close some windows, do some housekeeping here while uh, while we're doing this, we should get into the machine here momentarily if it wants to play nicely and log us in. And we'll try one more time and see if that will work for us here. And I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm not really certain why this is taking so long. Um, WordPress, I guess. I'm just checking the machine. The machine is running. So I'm not sure why we have this issue. Let's stop. We will reset the window. Let's try Cowboys 1 one more time. Hit enter and see if we can get into the machine. No need to save it, it's a really easy password. Okay, great, and we're logged in now. And we see that we have WP File Manager, and we know that WordPress is running with PHP, so we can come to the File Manager, and we can actually should be able to upload uh, a reverse shell and get shell access. So I'm going to come over here. We're going to split this. We're going to NC NLVP. And I think that I use 1234 with my PHP reverse shell. Uh, we're going to come to our tools. We're going to check out our re PHP reverse shell. Now you can find these online. They are also on your Kali machine. So they're really easy to get. Uh, and in this case, I'm using the one from uh, Pentest Monkey. And my address is already in here because I've used this before. So you need to set your address, 101007 in my case. My port number is 1234 as we set. And this is a Linux machine. However, if this was uh, a Windows machine, we could come over here and we would have to uh, do some, you know, some work here to get a shell uh, with cmd.exe. So we would probably need to put netcat on the machine as well. Uh, that being said, we know that this is in place and this is good, so we can come up here, hit the Add button, and we can select our file, and in this case, we're going to select PHP Reverse Shell, uh, and we see that it's uploaded. So let's open up a new window. We can go office.csl, and we can do PHP Reverse Shell .php. and over here on the left, you see that we're successfully logged in. We can who am I? We see where WW data ID, we see what our permissions are. Uh, and now we need to get to work at trying to figure out, uh, you know, user flag and how to escalate. So 
Uh, I'm going to upgrade my shell first, so I've got to open up some additional notes uh, and get my shell upgraded because I like to use, uh, you know, a Python, you know, one-liner to get the full, uh, you know, the full shell information or the full command line information versus, you know, this kind of limited looking shell. So you see my notes have just popped up while I was doing some DLL hijacking earlier. And I'm just going to copy and paste this. And we can see where we're at real quick with just LSLA. And you see that we're in just the bait, you know, the, the home directory, the, you know, the root directory. So uh, we need to CD to home, see who our users are. And we have Dwight and Ryan. So we can CD to Dwight real quick. And we get our access.txt file. You can cat access.txt and get that. Next thing we need to do is see what we can do. So if we sudo L, we can see that if we run uh, sudo uh, probably u bin bash, it looks like we can change to the Dwight user. So let's try that real quick. sudo dash u bin dot bash. I think we need to use I, so sudo u dwight bin dot bash. We'll try that one. Oh, cool. And as you see, we're logged in as Dwight now. Uh, we can try to sudo L here. And unfortunately, we need a password, which is going to be a pain in the butt for us. Uh, we could try to use the Cowboys, uh, but in this case, I don't think it's going to work. Uh, and now we need to see... Uh, you know, is there anything that we can benefit from moving forward uh, to try to escalate to root? So we, first we can just try to CD to the root folder and it's going to say permission is denied. Uh, now we need to try to find out a way if we can escalate our privileges uh, to take over the machine. And <clears throat> I didn't take notes for this part, so you're going to be working through it with me. Um, but we should get through it all right. So. Uh, let's go ahead and just uh, pull WinPs win over real quick. So we're going to CD to our tools. So CD desktop tools. We're going to do Python 3M HTTP server. And we're just going to wget HTTP colon slash slash 10, 10, 0, 7, 8000 is what that Python 3 server runs on. WinPs.sh. And we're going to chmod it. So chmod. Uh, plus x linps.sh and we're going to run that and we're going to see what we get real quick and it's going to cook through there as fast as it possibly can and red and yellow you know obviously means it's a privilege escalation vector so that's what we're going to look for first not seeing much of anything we don't really see anything that we can do here yet uh, we do see some processes that root is running as. see some information about the WordPress user that we found, you know, that we were able to log in from earlier, which is great. This app looks interesting. We could certainly check that out and see what we can find out from that. We see Dwight's password that we found earlier from the website just sitting there. And we're not really seeing anything though that we can use. Maybe the at um, might be able to be usable. We don't really see much here either. This is all WordPress stuff that we've already dealt with. We've already exploited WordPress to get into the machine. And again, there's Dwight's uh, username and hash. So we're going to scroll back up one more time and see if there's anything that we can really try to use here. And I'm interested in a couple things. So this ad is interesting here. This might be something that we could try to exploit. And I'm just going to pull up some notes over here from GTFO bins. 
and look at at and see if this is something that we can use. And in this case, at is not something that we'll be able to use. Um, and for the life of me, I cannot remember what I did to get root on this machine the other day. So um, we can enumerate it some more and see where we're at, I guess. So ls, la, and I think one of those things that we can look at, I want to take another look perhaps at nmap, and I want to nmap again and see maybe um, if we get different results. Possible that we went ahead and we looked at this machine too quickly. So let's nmap p this time and see if we're missing any ports. Uh, I thought maybe my scanner would have picked them up, and unfortunately maybe it didn't. So 172313.1, let's just do that. The same token, let's just split this, and we'll do the same thing with my scanner tool. So CD desktop, scanners, and let's run Python 3 again, threader. And let's do the same thing here and see if we get any additional ports that open up. Um, I'm looking for one specifically, and I'm not seeing it for some reason. So, And here it is actually. So port 10,000 is open, and this is what we're looking for. So uh, it's filtered though. So let's see what's going on here. We can PSAUX www to take a look and we see our processes here. We don't see much. We can netstat ANO and scroll up. And we see this port 10,000 is listening, uh, but it's filtered. So what we can try to do is something called uh, an SSH tunnel. So we need to have uh, a key though to be able to do that. So it's gonna take logging into SSH uh, via this tunnel. So we need to create a key to be able to log in via SSH though. So uh, we need to see here if Dwight has an SSH key. So CD SSH LSLA. Uh, and unfortunately he doesn't have a key. So we're gonna have to generate one. So I believe it's SSH, or it's key gen SSH or SSH key gen. Um, just gonna pull up notes and make sure that I'm doing this right. And it should be done correctly. So it's gonna be SSH key gen. So let's CD to our desktop and then office, or CSL, sorry, and then office. And we're gonna do SSH key gen and generate a key. And we're just gonna save it as Dwight RSA. And we're gonna enter that out. Now we can LS here and we can see that we've got Dwight RSA, Dwight RSA uh, as well. And now we need to take the key that's inside the pub uh, and echo it. And then we need to echo that over into a new file over here in the SSH. So let's cat Dwight rsa.pub and we see what this is now we need to copy this and we've got to do a little bit of modification so we're going to open up mouse pad we're going to do echo we're going to echo that out and then we're going to output it to dwight rsa and save that so we need to copy this come over here and we need to paste it and actually this needs to be authorized keys, sorry. So not Dwight RSA, it needs to be authorized keys. We need to select all again. We need to copy and paste it. And we missed something there. So we need to just exit out of that. And we missed a something. So we need to maybe try some uh, double quotes here and see if this works. Okay, so it outputs to authorized keys. We can cat authorized keys real quick to make sure that it's in there and it is in there. So now what we can do is we can try to SSH into Dwight, right? So what we'll do is SSH I with Dwight RSA and we're gonna do Dwight at 172.313.1 and see if we get connected. And we do, right? So that's great. 
So now what we need to do is uh, we need to open up another terminal window and we need to try to do what's called a tunnel to log in. And basically what we're doing is creating a proxy tunnel uh, to connect to this machine that we can then access uh, through our local host. So let's do that right now. And what we're going to do is it's going to be another SSH. I, and we need to go to our directory first, right? So desktop, try, or CyberSec Labs, and then Office. And we need to do SSHI Dwight RSA Dwight at, <clears throat> excuse me, Dwight at 172.313.1. And then we need to do L, which is gonna be 10,000 for the port, localhost, 10,000 and see if we get logged in like that. And we should, and we're logged in now. We see again that that's what's going on. And now we should be able to go localhost 10,000 and log in. So let's try localhost-10,000 and we can log, or we can get this admin portal. So let's go ahead and use search exploit now and see if we can find anything for webmin. And we get all kinds of stuff for webmin. Uh, we see that we've got a remote code execution here for 1.9, uh, which is worth checking out, right? We can see if it's in here with a version number. I don't see a version number per se. However, we can go ahead and try it anyway. I'm pretty confident that this is going to work. So uh, finally, we're just going to go ahead and we can close this window and collapse it. We have a lot of windows to collapse. So let's go MSF console and start MSF console up. And then we're going to look for this remote code execution for uh, web min. Hopefully this lesson or this video is helping you guys out with this. SSH tunnel is an incredibly powerful tool uh, and, and it can definitely be very helpful for you in the future uh, with anything that you're doing when it comes to this. So. Uh, it, it really does create a really good, uh, you know, proxy link uh, between uh, your target and what you're trying to do. It's good for bypassing, uh, you know, firewalls and uh, and filtering uh, and allowing you to really get past what the intended uh, pathway or what your intended privileges are uh, as a user. So let's go ahead and search for webmin, and you see that we have. Uh, back door, we have RCE, uh, and I think what we want is the back door, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but that doesn't look like it. We want remote code execution. So let's look for remote code execution real quick. And we might have to try a couple of these. Uh, I'm going to try three first and see what, or two first and see what happens. Excuse me. So use two. Let's look at our options. Uh, so we see our host, and we need to set our, our host to our local host, right? Because we're proxying through. Of the SSH tunnel. So let's set our host to local host, just like that. Uh, and then you set your L host to our VPN address. So in my case, 10, 10, 0, 7. And let's just run this and see what happens. And it doesn't look like it's working. Let's check our options really quick. Oh, there we go. Never mind. We have a session. I should be patient, right? So let's check sessions. Session I1. And let's ID and we are root. So we have successfully exploited uh, the webmin service using the SSH tunnel. Uh, we can upgrade our shell if we want. And I'm just going to grab that, uh, that one liner that I used earlier. And we're going to go ahead and paste that one liner. And you see that we're root, we're in the webmin folder, so we can just cd. Uh, we'll just cd to root real quick. We'll ls, and there is our system.txt flag, uh, meaning that we have completely uh, taken over the machine. So really, in this video today, we've seen how to uh, scan and enumerate a target. Uh, we've seen how to uh, successfully exploit uh, the, you know, the, the WordPress service by discovering uh, a hidden directory or subdomain, excuse me. Uh, we located a very poorly saved hash that was sitting inside of the HT password uh, directory through LFI or local file inclusion.
when we logged into the web, uh, you know, the WordPress server at that point, we were able to uh, add a PHP reverse shell, which allowed us access to the machine. Uh, and then we were able to poke around a bit. We had to go back and look at that MMAP scan. Uh, it didn't show up the first time. It could have been because I, you know, started too soon. I didn't give the machine time to run. However, that port 10,000 was filtered and we bypassed it with a process called SSH tunneling. Uh, SSH tunneling again is very, you know, very powerful. You can use it to bypass filtering, bypass firewalls, uh, and it is a good tool to keep uh, in, in your toolbox uh, and in your notes as well. So I hope this has helped you. This is my first tutorial video that I'm going to put on YouTube. So please be patient with me as I continue to perfect my process. Uh, I've got to figure out some video editing and whatnot. This is going to be a straight through video today uh, for you guys that is going to be unedited. So please bear with me. Please give me you know, your opinions and your thoughts on what I've provided you today. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you guys again soon on Twitch uh, as well as on Discord and Twitter. Uh, please let me know what your thoughts are. I hope this has helped you today. And I look forward again to working with you again soon and helping you guys out. So until next time, I'm the mayor. Uh, thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thanks.